Daniel Rogi. I'm a controls engineer here at Tormach. Uh, I do a lot of software development, did a lot of the development on Pathpilot. And I'm here to talk to you today about work offsets. Uh, we're gonna set a work offset using three different methods. Um, this is kind of a companion video to the one on tool length offsets um, that uh, you'd be able to see by searching our YouTube channel or looking online. So, um, in the tool length offset video, we talked about ways to measure a tool length. That would be the tip of the tool to the shoulder of the tool holder. And we measured three tools off uh, using the uh, electronic height gauge, using the machine tool itself, and then lastly using the electronic tool setter. Here in this work offsets video, we're going to do three ways to touch off work offsets. Um, the simplest one is going to be just using a, a tool that we've already measured just to touch off the part with. Uh, in conjunction with using a Wiggler Edge Finder. So this little guy, Wiggler Edge Finder, real common, inexpensive tool you can use to set X, Y offsets. Then we are going to use a Heimer Zero Master Touch Tool to set X, Y, Z work offsets. And lastly, we'll use a uh, a probe to touch off uh, touch off a work off so that would be this guy. So uh, before we begin, let's talk a little bit about what a work offset is. Um, when you program a machine tool, a CNC machine, uh, the machine itself thinks in terms of machine coordinates, that is distance from the limit switch. So the machine right now, if you look at the limit switch, is it's down about three inches. The machine's thinking. I'm minus three point something, 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 and Z. But the operator doesn't want to think about that. You want to think in terms of work coordinates. So if we're going to machine into this block here, the operator would prefer to think of this top surface as Z0, not as whatever it happens to be in machine coordinates. Uh, so work offsets and tool offsets allow you to program uh, relative to the part instead of relative to the machine's position. In fact, the machine's position is of so little value to people that we typically don't even show it on screen. So before we begin, we're just going to assume the machine's off. If you're powering it on, you'd have the control software powered up first, machine tool off, we'll go ahead and power on the machine tool, twist out the e-stop, press the green start button, and then I'm going to reference all axes here. Reference Z, reference Y, reference X. If I go ahead and zero out all these DROs when it's sitting at this position, that's basically saying no work offset. We're going to set the, the work offset zero equal to the machine offset zero so we can just take a look at machine coordinates for a second. So we're jogging this guy over uh, just to approximately where this part is. And I'll I'll show you what, what I mean about uh, it being more convenient to think in terms of work offsets, work offset coordinates uh, being more convenient than machine coordinates. So if we were programming this part, we might say, oh, we want this to be zero, and we want the back left corner to be x0, y0, right? Uh, and then obviously if we go over an inch and a half in x, we're over here. If we go down an inch and a half in y, we're right here. If we go down half an inch in Z, we'd be somewhere about there in the part. Uh, and that's a lot easier to think about when you're writing the G code, whether it's the CAM system writing the G code or you writing the G code by hand. It's much easier to think about that than it is to think about, oh, right now I'm at 11.8 in X and minus 1.9054 in, in Y. That, that's harder for us to conceptualize as operators. So that's the whole idea of work offsets is to make this easier um, by allowing us to think of where the the part is distance relative to the part rather than distance relative to the machine. So first we're going to go ahead and touch off uh, the Z offset and I'm going to use this tool to touch that Z offset. So first off, we touched off this tool in the last video. I've got a true tool length and that's important. I really need to have the true length of this tool before I can touch off the work offset. And If you, if you want to find out how we did that, you can go back into that, that uh, tool offsets video. If this is tool one, I have to make sure the system knows that tool one is in there. If I say tool seven, well, I, that could really mess stuff up because it's tool one in here and the control thinks it's tool seven. That's bad. 
what we want is tool one. Type in tool one and hit the M6 G43 button. And then I'll bring this thing over the part and what I'm going to do is take our very high-tech advanced uh, measuring device here. It's a piece of notebook paper. And I'm just going to jog the machine tool down while wiggling the notebook paper, paper back and forth. And you'll see what I'll do is uh, go ahead and step in thousandths until that paper binds up. Now I can't pull the paper anymore. And we're just going to go ahead and click the zero Z button. So that sets the zero point for, for that part. And in fact, if we, if we go over here and type into the MDI line, E zero, Z zero, it'll go right down there to the surface of the part. So that's how we'd set um, a Z work hard set. We'll go ahead now and uh, get our wiggler edge finder and we'll use this to set the X, Y of work offsets. Um, one thing to note, most wiggler edge finders have a diameter of uh, 200 thou. Some, uh, however, are different. Some are 400 thou. Uh, you want to make sure before you go ahead and, and use the tool that you're confident what uh, the diameter of this is. So first things first, to use this tool, the spindle must be running. So we're going to go ahead and start the spindle. And common is about 1,000 RPM for a wiggler edge finder. So we'll go ahead and type 1,000 RPM into the uh, RPM VRO. And then we're going to hit the spindle forward button. This guy's called a wiggler because it actually wiggles. I obviously would not use my finger on a spinning machine tool if it were uh, a cutting tool. But a wiggler is a relatively safe tool. So you notice the, the wiggler is in fact wiggling, and as I jog the um, cable over a little bit, it's going to stop wiggling. And once it stops wiggling, I'm going to step it over, I mean thousands, oh, you see that? It broke, and that's what you want to look for. So I'm going to back it up a little bit, not wiggling, I'm stepping, and you want to wait until, just until the wiggler breaks, meaning it bumps away from its uh, concentric spinning. Oh, right there. So now that we're right at the edge of the part, remember that's a 200 thou wiggler edge finder. So what, we're, what we really are here is we're minus 100 thou in X from being on center line, right? So I'm going to type in here because we're to the left, with the negative sign, we're going to set minus 0.1, or minus 100 thou. So real quick, I'm going to go over and do, do Y. So there we are before the break. Just bring it in and we know that we're 100 thou above the part, so I'm going to type in positive 100 thou. I'm going to go ahead and stop the spindle. So we're going to check our work by going to the corner of the part where we set the zero points. And I'm going to, I'm going to check by typing in G0 for rapid move, X0, Y0. You notice there we are, centered over the corner of the part. So that's how to touch off work offsets using a tool and a wiggler. Now we're going to cover it with the, the Heimer 3D sensor. So first off, in this system the Heimer is tool 50. We've already measured it off. We measured it off. We showed how to do that in the last video. If you come down here, Heimer measured its length, the length is applied, and we're going to use this Heimer to go ahead and measure uh, the offsets. It should be really quick. If you notice, I'm just going to bring this guy down. When using the Heimer, uh, unlike with the Wiggler Edge Finder, zero is zero, so you don't have to account for the ball diameter the way you have to account for the diameter of the Wiggler Edge Finder. You can see we're only off by about nine-tenths of a thousandth. Click the zero Z button. Come over here and X. Little zero X. You notice we were off by about a thousandth of an inch there in X. And that's that's about usual for a wiggler edge finder. You're going to be good to a thou or two using a wiggler edge finder. The Heimer is more accurate. And 
here we are touching off Y. Tenths. So we can double check our work. G0, X0, Y0. And if we draw it down, we'll see. Sure enough, we're right there on the corner. Okay, now last, we'll find a work offset using the, uh, the probe. So uh, we just showed um, touching your uh, X, Y, and Z zeros off with uh, just an end mill and a wiggler edge finder, and then we showed the Heimer uh, zero master, and now we're going to show uh, using the touch probe. It's a little bit of setup that we have to do before we can use the touch probe uh, to find zeros, and I'm about to walk you through that right now. So first over on the setting screen, we need to tell it whether we've got a passive probe or a digitizing probe. And then we're also going to go over on the probe screen to the setup tab. Now, if you have not used your probe before, you need to tell it what the diameter of the stylus is, and you need to tell, uh, tell it the probe length. So we've got a um, little method here of setting a reference height and then moving and setting the probe length, and that'll allow you uh, to measure a very accurate probe height, because the probe is not something that's easy to, to measure, say, in with the granite, the granite uh, block and the electronic height gauge. So we're going to actually use the machine to measure the probe length here. And these instructions, you can read them on the screen, they're very similar to the reference surface setting that we did in the tool offsets video. So first thing I'm going to do is just remove the collet here from the spindle. You can see the collet, when there's no tool in it, it does protrude a little bit from the spindle nose. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Uh, if you have a power draw bar, you don't have to take the collet out. You can just press the lock button and lock it in the up position with no tool in there, and it'll suck up into the spindle nose. And then, uh, just like the uh, previous video, I'll go ahead and use a, a, a one, two, three block as a reference surface here. You can see uh, in the photograph or little pictogram here, we're using a scale, but you could use really anything. There's a jog down below the level of the one, two, three block, and then I'm slowly going to jog back up. Now I can slide the thing. And I'm in tenth step, and I'll go ahead and just step back down until, until it kind of binds up. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the screen here, set reference height. Oh, and it warns me, tool zero must be the active tool. Right, because look, tool 50 is the active tool that was left over from the Heimer. Always remember, tell the software what's in the spindle. So tool zero must be the active tool, sure. I'm gonna go ahead and set the reference height there. And we'll go ahead and jog up. I'll put the tool in the spindle. We need to put the collar back in as well. I'm gonna plug it into the machine tool here and Ahead and go to the spindle. A couple of notes. If you're using uh, uh, this tool or really anything you don't want to spin while it's in the spindle, it's not a bad idea to turn the spindle lockout off just so you, you don't forget. Um, if you've got a machine with a full enclosure on it, you don't have the operator panel, uh, you can also def uh, defeat the spindle just by leaving this door slightly ajar of the spindle. Uh, switch up here, if that's not depressed, it'll prevent you from starting the spindle. And then we'll go over here, get it close, make sure I'm not going to jump into a hole on that block. And, of course, we want to tell it that it's tool 99 is the probe tool. And we'll do move and set probe length. And then we can go over here to the offset screen and verify that there actually is a length in there. Uh, this probe tool looks like it's about 4.4461 inches, and that's, that's about appropriate. And then the diameter of this particular stylus is 0.118 inches. Uh, and tool 99, by convention here at Tormach, is the probe tool. We enforce that tool 99's got to be active in the system before you can do any probing, and that just kind of helps prevent bonehead errors of people like me forgetting to tell the system what tool is in the spindle before, uh, 
for probing things because it does use that diameter value on the XY uh, probing routines. Uh, our work zero on this block, once again, is the top, uh, back left corner. We go over to the probing screen, XYZ probe. We'll first do Z, find Z, and set work origin. One thing to note here, the probe is going to probe at whatever the active feed rate is. So if we go ahead and say, oh, I don't know, feed rate of 60, we can probe faster. So here we are, we're going to find the X, it's in X positive, we're moving towards the workpiece. I'll go ahead and not find X, that'll tell us where X is. We're going to probe X and set the work origin. minus and set the work origin. And one last time, we'll do a little double check here. G0, X0, Y0 to, to make sure that uh, the coordinates look correct. And in fact, they do. So um, to summarize, this video covered three different ways of setting work offsets in PathPilot. Um, the, uh, a traditional or old-fashioned method of sparking off of the surface with a tool uh, and using a wiggler edge finder. Uh, we then covered using the Heimer, which I, I believe is the easiest of the three methods. And then last we covered using a probe. It's by far and away the quickest and most convenient of the three methods. Uh, so thank you for uh, joining us today and uh, enjoy your machine. <laughs>